Hello everybody. On this video, we'll be talking about breath work. And first things first, disclaimer, this is all for the purposes of information and entertainment. And I'm not obviously a qualified doctor or anyone who has any kind of scientific or academic background. So what the fuck do I know? What a great way to start a video. Now you'll definitely be interested in what I have to say. Yes. Okay. Um, actually, I will, I will say though, I will say, I value all of you who watch the channel and, and your input because it helps me to direct the channel. And there's two different ways I was thinking that I could go about a video like this. And I'm going to say fairly high level in the sense that we'll be talking about, you know, what these things are and, and sort of how we can apply them and maybe where the benefits are. But I won't be going too much into detail at all on, on the studies and the mechanisms from a more science kind of perspective, because as I mentioned already, that is not necessarily my wheelhouse. That's not to say though, that I, that I shouldn't try to go in that direction because I could definitely try to do that. And obviously there are some hazards with it. I don't think you can really do it half ass or improperly, but there's a lot of case studies, I would say on YouTube of creators that have successfully done this with no background in it. I would, I would reference uh, Derek from More Plates, More Dates. I think he's well-respected in what he produces and he has no background whatsoever in any, in any of this, but his opinions and views are well-respected um, as he is genuinely very good at doing the research and the study that uh, goes into all of his work. So with that said, um, curious what you guys think about the direction I should take this. But first things first, I wanna talk about Wim Hof breath work. Then I wanna talk about the physiological side. And then I wanna talk about a study that I felt was quite valuable in terms of breath work. So first of all, with Wim Hof breath work, I'm gonna just describe what it is and then we'll go into why it's come up. So Wim Hof breath work, if you're not familiar with it, I think it's amazing and I've used it in the past for helping me to sleep, to relax me and to just generally get more benefits from my sleep. Now, I never thought about the application to gaming performance, but I absolutely think there's a strong case and we'll go into that in a second. Wim Hof breath work is uh, just hyperventilation followed by breath holds. So you tend to take a full breath in, then you take a, a partial breath out and then you then you do it again. So you're kind of hyperventilating, you're doing it rather quickly. So it's kind of like. Kind of just, you know, fairly quick. So full breath in, not a full breath out. You could do about 40, 40 of those or so. And then you then you do a breath hold. So your body's highly oxygenated, which allows you to hold your breath for longer essentially. And you do like multiple rounds of this and it feels amazing. You, it, it definitely releases endorphins and it releases dopamine. So it, it, that's, this, this is part of the reason why it's relaxing uh, to do it. Um, and the more that you do it, the more intense it gets. So in terms of the more you do it in, in a session, like the amount of rounds you do, the more intense it can get. So with that said, um, I would be cautious, you know, speak with your doctor and, every, and, and all of that if you're, if you're unsure and I'm not advising that anyone do it, but I think this is a cool thing to experiment with and something I have enjoyed. Now, this came up, before we talk about some of the benefits, this came up because I, I tweeted asking you guys, what is something you've done for your performance lately that has been a huge difference maker? And someone said the Wim Hof breath work. And I was like, whoa, that's super cool that someone has actually said this because a lot of, I, I've just, I have never seen anyone talk about it in this context. And I think it's amazing. So here's the response that I got from Robbie BK. So shout out to you, my friends. You're doing some cool stuff. Now, nerves, number one. So, because this is the explanation as to how it helped, how Wim Hof Breathwork has helped Robbie BK. Nerves, I felt way less nervous, anxious, and shaky the first three to five rounds. Okay, well, this makes sense. So what tends to happen when you happen when you like lead into a performance is as you get into the performance, like all the time that leads up into it, anxiety, stress can accumulate because your brain is thinking about the performance, but it can't do the performance yet. And I would make, you know, I'd liken it to any situation where you've maybe gotten up in front of a crowd and you've got to speak like at school or whatever, you know, what you're doing a talk, anything like that. I think most of us have had a similar experience where you are very anxious about doing the thing or like even going in for an exam or whatever. But this, but the moment when you're actually sat down doing it much like the same thing with like playing a video game and playing a match, as soon as you get to the performance, the anxiety starts to subside because it's no longer building and your brain is now focused on task by task by task by task, executing all of the programming and the practice that you've, that you've done over the weeks uh, prior. So it makes sense then that this would actually be highly beneficial because as I've just mentioned, the Wim Hof breath work does produce endorphins and dopamine. And so that feels good. And then it also is just like very relaxing because of the, the mechanisms involved in, in this type of breath work. It's very like, it, it's a pretty big onset of relaxation. So that is a nice strategy actually to mitigate 
the buildup of stress. Because on top of that, the Wim Hof breathwork is actually good at just mitigating stress in general. Like it's just good. At, it seems to be good um, at helping us to not get as stressed or not be as kind of fearful in, in any way that we might be. So this totally makes sense that this would help leading into the match to deal with that particular problem that some people experience more than others. Number two, mental clarity and focus. I find it way easier to get to and stay in the flow state. Now, this is a really interesting one because this, like the nerves thing, that's kind of a given with most breath work. Most breath work tends to have a positive impact on stress and anxiety. But the mental clarity and focus, this might be unique, uh, could be unique to the Wim Hof breath work. And I will explain why I think that might be the case. Now, um, so first thing I'll say is that with Wim Hof breath work, I, have, I wasn't able to find any studies that delved into Wim Hof breath work specifically and tested that with control groups and actually, you know, actually looked at how that impacts cognitive performance. You know, th this would be like, you know, exactly what we would want to see um, in our particular context. But I did see some studies that were done on with similar mechanisms um, that are also found with or are the operating mechanisms with Wim Hof. So, for example, intermittent hypoxia. That's, that's what you're doing with Wim Hof. You're doing these deep breath holds for like multiple minutes because you can hold your breath for way longer. Like I was finding myself getting up to three minutes um, pretty routinely, um, whereas normally I would probably be quite stretched to, to go over, you know, two minutes. I don't practice, you know, holding my breath, but I was able to get really, really long breath holds with Wim Hof, maybe, maybe more than three minutes, uh, maybe like four minutes as well. I, don't, I can't really remember. It's been a while since I did it. But anyway, the point is what I found in these studies that were uh, testing um, intermittent hypoxia, and I can link them, is that they found an increase of up to 20% in the blood, in the brain blood flow. So what that tend seems to indicate is increased cognitive capacity, um, more alertness, more focus, more clarity. So this tracks with what I was reading in the studies as they describe this intermittent hypoxia. So that's that's pretty fascinating, actually. So um, I'm really curious about this and I like feel kind of stupid. I never tested this myself when I was competing. Um, so just to read the rest of this reply. So we've, I feel like we validated like the reasons why both of these things make sense. Um, that's Robbie BK is experiencing. And then Robbie BK said, just to give an, an example, last time I did it, I got into a flow state very early during map one of the series. A few games before that, I didn't do the breathing and it took me two maps before I got into a good flow of calling. I believe I have ADHD as well, so it's, it helps me to not ever think about random things as much and be more in the moment. By the way, when you're relaxed, it generally tends to be the case your brain is less jumpy, less retractable. So it makes a lot of sense that that's, um, that would be particularly beneficial if you have ADHD because, um, again, I'm not an expert in any of these things, but for those people that I have know, uh, that I know who have suffer that are suffering with this particular um, issue, um, at least the negative aspects of it, they, it tends to be the case that, you know, they are super distractible, obviously, and, and anxious, There's a lot of anxiety there. So the relax, relaxation probably helps. Um, I could see that it could help with this for sure. So I tend to change routines quite often to test things out, whether it is food, power naps, supplements, and overall the breathing is one of the few things that helps me the most with performance. I try to be very careful not doing it too close to game time as it tends to make me very relaxed, but that's something I have to try more often to see if it's a good or bad thing. Been doing this on and off for about a year now, and most of my best games have been when I've done the breathing, so I'm a big advocate. Okay, it's another really great point here to go into. So um, another good point to go into here is the insight, the comment made about being too relaxed. That's that's a really great point because I've talked about this before, uh, sort of the performance bell curve, where if you imagine the bell curve, you want to stay at the, on the top of the bell curve, basically that sweet spot for performance. And if you go too far one way or the other, you're going to fall off the bell curve and your perform. And this is this is your performance bell curve. So you're going to fall off and you're going to be playing horribly. And you can think of it as 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 the top of the bell curve is is kind of like this the spectrum of relaxation to energetic, essentially, because it tends to be the case that every player is, is different. Every player is a little bit different. Some people perform better when they're more relaxed. Some people perform better when they're more juiced up, when they're more amped up. I'm someone that performs much better when more relaxed. I did not know this for many years. <laughs> so I would spend all this time amping myself up trying you know, right before the match. And then I'm like super amped and I'm like thinking that's going to help me, but it just didn't help me. And then eventually I realized, oh, maybe I should try to figure out what's going on in my body when I actually am in like playing my best, like playing super well. 
and when I did that and I sort of did the, the data mining as it were and and had the awareness when I was next in the flow state and the next few times I was in flow state, I was able to be like, okay, how am I feeling? I'm like, oh my God, I'm super relaxed. <laughs> like, okay, this is a, a big indication I've been doing it wrong because if I wanted to start off like as hot as possible, I should go go into the game relaxed because that's that's going to make the, the the path between where I am right now and my flow state much shorter. This is a much shorter journey to get to my optimal performance. So that makes way more sense now. I should be figuring out like what the optimal performance is and I should be trying to figure out how do I like shorten the distance to getting there as much as I can. So that was something that I realized. And I'm, if you guys have never thought about it for yourself, then it is something to be cautious of because equally many things will augment your energy levels. Things can amp you up, things can relax you. So the, the two very most common nootropics that we, uh, we, we find for these things is caffeine to amp you up or L-theanine to relax you. And this is why they can be kind of a good combination because you can get some of the, the cognitive performance enhancing benefits of the caffeine. And when you add in the L-theanine, it can kind of take, it can take the edge off of the caffeine and kind of not allow the caffeine to amp you up too much because it operates in a way that it kind of relaxes you. So you're not getting super amped, but you're still getting the kind of cognitive benefits that you're looking for from those nootropics. So that's why it's kind of like a good combo, but there's like a specific ratios, everyone you know, needs specific amounts. So actually a much more complicated topic than I think um, most people understand because there's so many different elements to it. Like again, as we already mentioned, most people will talk about dosing, but you have to you have you have to know your dose for your performance. We we can't dose without thinking about how does it impact our performance when all of us are different in terms of not just the performance zone and how it gets us to the performance zone that we're, that's our sweet spot that I described, but equally like what's your sensitivity like? Some people caffeine doesn't actually do very much for them. They're not caffeine sensitive, or some people are sensitive to caffeine but they have been desensitized and they need to have a different protocol. Like there's just honestly there's so much there. So I, we have the episodes on caffeine where Casey goes into depth about all of these and how you can kind of figure it out, but something to bear in mind. So, um, so with that said, if you're someone that needs to be a bit more amped up, maybe Wim Hof is not something that's going to be beneficial, um, to, to try because of the relaxing effects that it has. So with all that said, um, I think Wim Hof is, is a pretty cool thing to experiment with. Again, um, if you have any uh, pot you know, potential worries due to existing medical conditions or anything else that would worry you with regards to the, you know, the respiratory element, like where you're hyperventilating and everything else, definitely you know, consult your doctor. And again, this is for entertainment and informational purposes only. Um, disclaimers, we love them. So um, <laughs> um, next thing is the physiological side. So this is something that everybody can do. This is an amazing one for gamers because it's super easy to just throw in anywhere. It takes you like five seconds to do and it's it's uh, it's an immediate impact on your stress and anxiety levels and helps to drop them. <laughs> not not to raise them, but to drop them. And so if you're in a Counter-Strike match and you die or you know, you're in between rounds, you can, or in your know, buy time, free time, you can easily do a physiological side. The way it works is you want to inhale like a full, you know, uh, just a full inhale, get your lungs as full as you can. And then you sneak in another inhale and then you, you breathe out through the mouth. Um, so it'd be something like this. Ah, <sighs> feels good. It always feels good. Um, <laughs> Um, but that was it. That was it. And this is something that we shared with our players at 100 Thieves as well. And they found it beneficial too. It's again, it's just something that's like, if you're feeling amped up, you can just do it anywhere you are at any moment. It's so easy to do. It's, it's, it's like something that everybody should know about because it's of its extremely easy application. So with that said, check out the physiological site. It was coined by Andrew Huberman. Um, he definitely has a lot of content around it. Um, there's actually something else of his non-sleep deep rest, which I think is worth talking about, but I'm not going to do that in this video. It's more of a, it's more of a different thing, but I guess it's kind of related, but anyway, non-sleep deep rest. I'll mention it at least. If you want to think about something that can also be, uh, uh, adding to your, fuck it. We're talking about it now. So if you want to think about something that can uh, help you recover in your practice days. So, you know, if you're someone that's maybe getting fatigued in your practice day 
and you're finding that maybe the last couple of scrim blocks are a bit more difficult to get through. Um, what you could try is non-sleep deep rest. And this is essentially a mental recovery tool that is sort of, it's, it, it basically it's like a meditation that can take, I think like 10, 15 minutes. You can find guided versions of this on, on YouTube. If you, if you search into YouTube, uh, in a non-sleep deep rest, um, Huberman, maybe, I think he's got a specific one that he's done for people. And so it's a guided meditation where it's basically body scanning. And the impact of this is like massive mental rejuvenation. So you'll, you'll feel like quite refreshed afterwards, um, as opposed to not taking any intervention and in, in, not taking any intervention when you're feeling tired or struggling with, with that mental fatigue that can happen when you were just, you're just like hitting those matches hard. Um, so a really good recovery tool, I would say, um, that you can, you can put in, in the middle of your day. So look, look that one up if that sounds interesting. Um, Right. So last thing I wanted to talk about, because we covered the physiological side, we added in non-sleep deep rest. We talked about Wim Hof is there was a great study that I found, um, which was, it was actually from a Huberman episode where he was talking to a respiratory expert. And it's really interesting because this respiratory expert is a bit old school. He wasn't super sold on meditation per se, but he was really curious. And he was thinking how much of the benefits of meditation is the meditation component, which is all about focus direct like being able to control and direct your mental focus and attention or is it the breath work that accompanies pretty much all meditation because pretty much all meditation in in the pursuit of that control of attention we we usually place that onto our breathing almost like all meditation of some kind has some focus on breathing it's one of the easiest ways to get out of your head and into your body is to focus on your breathing and actively control your breathing um, which is something that's typically autonomic but you're taking it over and intentionally are deciding how it works. And so he's like, I think it's probably the breathing, but let me find a way to test this. So what he did was he he got a he got a bunch of mice he, it, because he felt he felt like it would be too hard to to have like strict controls for this and clean data with humans. So he's like, okay, the easiest way to do this would be with mice and having like a control group and so on. So with the mice that he was uh he was like testing if this is a thing or not, is he slowed their breathing for 30 minutes per day for a month. And then he had the control group, you know, who, of mice that did everything the same, except didn't have this, you know, induced slowed breathing 30 minutes per day. And at the end of the month, he tested them by using um, a some kind of electric, like electrical stimulation that essentially induces a fear response in the mice. I forget specifically what it was, but the fear response is measured by how long the mice freeze. So their freeze time equates to their level of fear. So the longer the freeze, the more fear, the less freeze, less fear. And what he found was the mice that had been doing the 30 minutes a day of slowed breathing, they had a significantly less uh, fear response, a significantly lower fear response. Um, and it was so it was so different it was so less severe compared with the control group that it suggested an extreme manipulation of the amygdala which is the area which controls fear response in your brain and so this is really interesting for anyone that's, that has issues with fear and anxiety i know that most of my mental game leaks actually come from this area of the emotional kind of buckets um it, this is very helpful this is potentially very helpful obviously it's a, it's a mice study but it is something that's definitely worth trying if you're someone that, that struggles with anxiety and fear um, it is something that could be very helpful, especially if, if let's say you like me have mental game issues that more relate to this, this part of the spectrum, the emotional spectrum. I think it's something that's, that could be genuinely worth considering because the thing is here as well is that the, the, th the fear is a response to something. So it basically means that you are less sensitive to the same thing that would induce a high level of fear. So either you're not going to experience near as much fear or you just won't, it just won't be triggered at all in the first place. So that's kind of the difference. And when we think about mental game leaks, me the mental game leaks are us receiving a stimulus and then us responding to that stimulus. So if that stimulus, for some reason, it's encoded in our brain that that's going to you know, link up with a fear response, either the fear response will be highly diminished or it might not even be triggered in the first place, depending on the severity of the stimulus. That's kind of the way I read this. And so I think that's actually profoundly interesting. Um, and and uh, so I wanted to share that with you guys as well. So, okay, with all of this said, um, uh, we've come to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you would want to see that's like this in the future, whether you think, like I said at the beginning, I should try to go 
less or like well keep the high level stuff but but go more in the lower level and i'd have to do more research and studying around that but i'm curious what you guys think because i don't know um in the esports space at least whether there's other creators kind of doing that or not and yeah it's interesting we'll see we'll see where we take the channel it's an evolution with you guys uh helping me so i hope you guys liked it and i'll see you on the next one cheers